Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Marr and welcome to Ceramics One. I am going to show you one of the first one, well, first project we're going to do, you're going to have two options, two slightly different methods of doing it. And uh, by now I probably have gone over with you either in person or through a video uh, the different stages of pottery. Um, this is stage one. Uh, I am going to probably do this in advance for everybody. We're going to have a lot of different requirements because of COVID, but the clay comes in 25 pound bags. This one we've added some water to because it got a little hard over, over time. And you're not going to need as much clay as you think. Okay, your first project is going to be to um, create a piece of fruit or vegetable or another shape that has three dimensions and it's going to have to be hollow. Uh, you always want to seal the bag of clay up when you're done using it nice and tight because we don't want the clay to dry out. It's going to be tricky in a hybrid situation because there are times you don't want your clay to dry out before you're ready and there are times where um, you need it to dry faster than it's going to dry. So we will get used to all of that over time. And I'm going to switch this so that you're looking down. At the table. And seeing what I'm doing. Okay. This is a wire. Be very, very careful with it and only use it for what it is intended for, which is cutting the clay. So, one of the things we'll learn in the process is that clay is, um, well, you can't, you can't have air bubbles in the clay. So the clay that we buy comes uh, already perfect with no air bubbles in it. And we'll discuss air bubbles in that first either lecture or um, video that I make about the subject. But air expands. So if you have an air bubble in the, your clay and you put it in the kiln and heat it up, then that's going to expand. Now, if you're making an apple, let's say we're making an apple. I don't know, it might be an apple, it might be a pear. We'll see what kind of mood I'm in at the time. Um, you, will, you should probably bring one into school, whatever you're going to use. If you're going to use an apple or you're going to use a banana, which is a slightly different process, um, bring one into school with you uh, the, when you come in, when you have an in-person day. And we're going to do this in, in person. A lot of the work that you do at home will be prepping for the in-person work. Okay? So, I never want to fold the clay over. I don't want to flatten it out. So what I did just now is I pushed on the corners to get it rounder, okay? I might actually cut a little bit of this off. Now, one thing you don't want is you don't want air bubbles in the clay. You also want your clay to be relatively thin so it dries relatively fast. Um, and if there's moisture hidden inside the clay, it could crack or explode or all sorts of things can happen in the kiln. So we're going to hollow this apple out. It's not going to be um, solid, okay? S which will create one big giant air bubble, but then we're going to put a hole in it so the air can get out. So you need less clay than you think because you're going to hollow it. So the first method that we're going to learn is the pinch pot method. And for that, you want to start with a relatively round piece of clay. You want to have some water handy. You want to make sure you have all your tools. And we'll go over those as we go along. You don't want too slippery, though. Um, you're going to cup the sphere in one hand. And you're going to press with the other hand. And you're going to start by pressing down at the bottom. So you're going to press all the way through the clay until you're about, um, for something this size, you probably want it about as thick as your pinky. The rule is, your clay, the walls of your clay should never, it, for this class, I mean, can you get it thinner in real life? Yes. For your first project, 
no thinner than your pinky, no thicker than your thumb. Okay? If you're going to do something as thick as your thumb, it's probably going to be a pretty big project. For something as small as an apple, as thin as your pinky would be good. So I roughly can feel that that's about the thickness of my pinky from this finger to the tip of this finger. Okay? And that's the consistent wall I want to create by pressing. And I can be doing this with my thumb or I can do it with my finger. But it's important that you switch gears about halfway through. Um, I see people do this and all of a sudden they've got a bowl. We don't want a bowl. We want it to come back in on itself. The key to that is when you're in the bottom half of your sphere, you're pressing from the inside and supporting it from the outside. So this is what's giving you your shape on the outside and the finger on the inside is doing the work. Okay? So my walls are about as thick as my pinky in the bottom half of this, which is pushing all this clay up here. So this is, this is like that thick at the top, but it's only that thick at the bottom. So when you get about halfway, you want to start causing your shape to go in again. So now you're going to hold a, your thumb inside and press on the outside towards the center. Okay? So you're stretching that clay up and in. Okay? And so that way you're not ending up with a giant wall um, that just keeps going out and out and creates a bowl. You're pressing towards the center of the hole when you're doing the top half. Now that's pretty thick, so I want to make sure I'm, I'm stretching it to make it a little bigger. And it's okay if it's not a perfect shape to begin with. We can play with that as we go. But what's, what is important is that your walls aren't too thick and there's not too much variety between the thickness and the thinness within the, the walls. You want it to be pretty consistently about the size of your pinky. What, you don't, what happens is if you keep pressing out and pressing out, it's going to get wider and wider and wider and then you're going to have to ruffle it and um, squish it in. And when you do that, all sorts of air can get in between those little ruffles. So it's important. Now the pressure is coming from my fingers and my thumb is just supporting on the inside. And that is how you get it not to be a bowl, but to just come in on itself. And if it if it's thicker on one side than the other, you can just press more on that side. It doesn't matter if that hole's in the center because what we're going to do, we're always going to make sure that we're smoothing it out and we're pressing and putting some pressure on so we don't get any air bubbles until we can actually close it on itself. Okay? So now you have a completely hollow shape. And I'm supporting it and shaping it a little bit with both hands. The air inside right now, it is a giant air bubble, is giving me something to press against. But you don't want to press too hard because you'll go right through it. Another tool you're going to use is a sponge. Now I'm squeezing all the excess water out of this, just with a bucket of water on the side. You can't see that very well, I don't think. but um, And I can smooth it out. Okay, I can smooth it some more later, too. Now, as long as I'm touching it, it's not going to stay completely smooth, but you should get rid of any divots or wrinkles or things that you don't want in here. And then think about the kind of apple you want. So maybe my apple is going to be a little pointy on the bottom. So I'm just pressing in against the air, smoothing over to get rid of any cracks or holes or weak spots. And then I press down a little bit at the top so that that's where the stem would be coming out of my apple. And at this part, sometimes they have little bumps at the bottom, so maybe I'll give it some bumps. Okay, that's sort of smooth. Just keeping your fingers wet, you can do a lot of this. Now, if I push too hard, I could go through or um, change the shape more than I want. So I'm squeezing back up again to make a kind of oblong apple, not a short, fat, little round one, but something with those bumps on the bottom. That kind of this way. I also want it to be able to stand on its own, so I want to keep that in mind. Okay. Press down there. 
Now, I forgot to bring in the wax. I'm actually not doing this demonstration in our ceramics room. I'm doing it in the clean room, which is the drawing room. So I forgot to bring the wax in here, but we'll talk about that later. When you get to this point, you've got your basic shape, okay? Um, there's a couple things that you want to do. First of all, I want to make it look more like an apple. So I'm going to take a little bit of my excess clay. Interruption with Nathan Please report to the main office. Thank you. And maybe put a little excess at the bottom of my stem. I'm just creating a stem here. I want to make sure I'm kind of folding it over a little bit. So I want to make sure I press hard enough to get rid of any air bubbles in the middle. Get rid of any excess. And my stem is going to get thin up near the top. And then I'm going to score it. And I'm going to use a little slip too. Put a little water in here. Now, there are times when you're using slip, which is very, very wet clay, almost like mud. And it has to be perfect because you're using it for something like slip casting or slip trailing, which we'll talk about down the road. But for now, slip is just really wet clay that we're going to use almost like a glue. Okay? So it doesn't have to be perfect. So we're going to make our own slip for just joining things together. So I would score. We'll talk about this when we do something coming up. Score it. Put the slip on it just to use it almost like a glue to get into those little crevices that the fork makes. And then I made it a little thick at the bottom so I'd have something to smooth out. So the three terms when you're joining something that you want to think about are score, slip, and smooth. Okay? Because you want to smooth away any possible air bubbles and you want to attach. Now, anything that's really thin, like this stem or a leaf, if I put a leaf on it, let's put a leaf on. Um, this is thinner than my pinky. This isn't supporting anything, so it's kind of okay that this is thinner than my pinky. What I probably should do is make it a little thicker. It's also very wet clay, so it's easier to work with. Um, I'm just making it a little thicker at the bottom. Shaping it a little more like a leaf. So that it feels like a leaf. It's very thin at the top, but at the bottom I have some surface to attach. And I can always make it thinner. Get rid of excess down the road. Okay. So, take my really wet slip, get it in there, score it up here, maybe. Oh, I'm going to make that a little thinner. Smooth the edges. I can also use a modeling tool. There's different tools that you could use. Some are plastic, some are metal, some are wood. But I can use that to get in there someplace that takes a little more finesse than my fingers are capable of here. You can form underneath the leaf. Nobody's going to see it because I'm going to, I know I'm going to bend this leaf over. I'm not going to have it stick straight out like that. I can take some of that excess and pull it down to attach. And then maybe curve it down and up. I can press it to make it look like it's hollow in there, but there's really some stuff holding it together. Now, because my walls are a little thicker than my leaf, what I would do is I would put a wax on here with a paintbrush, co coat this with wax, and that will cause the leaf to dry more slowly. The air won't get at the clay, and it'll dry a little slower than the rest of it because the wax is only on the leaf. Um, I just didn't bring it in here now, but I would put that on with a paintbrush and then hot soapy water on the paintbrush because the wax will harden just like a candle wax would and your paintbrush is going to be good for nothing after that happens. So um, always, always, always clean out your paintbrushes as soon as you use. We'll have certain ones that we designate for wax. Um, so it looks done, but it's not. And that's because we still have one giant air bubble. 
okay? So, we need a way for air to escape. You should never have a, a hollow surface, a hollow shape that has no way for the air to get out of it. So, you don't want to make it the size of a pinhole because clay will shrink. And when the clay shrinks, it'll shrink that hole even smaller. So this is a pin tool. You have to be very careful with these as well. Um, you could start the hole with that, but then I'm going to continue and make it even bigger. I could even just use the other side and go straight through, making sure that I'm hitting the big hollow center. Okay? So now the air can get out. You won't see it. You could do that underneath, um, underneath the leaf as well if you wanted to. Someplace very subtle where you're not going to see it. Okay? Um, and then the other thing that is crucial is that you carve your initials into the bottom of it. And the reason for that is I've got three ceramics classes. So even, first of all, a lot of people will make apples, oranges, simple shapes, pears. Um, they're they might look exactly like yours when you're making it, but when you come in the next day, all those apples are going to look the same. So make absolutely sure you put your name on it, because it could be somebody else thinks your apple is their apple. Okay? Um, so I'm going to put my initials on here with the thin end of the pin tool, not carving all the way through. And this one is ready to dry out. Okay, right now the clay is very workable. I could carve into it. Um, if I'm carrying it into the kiln room to let it dry out, um, it might get a texture on it, more like a peach, really. So you could smooth it down once you put it on the rack in the kiln room. Okay? That's project number one. That's using the pinch pot method and, and using pressure on the inside, pressure on the outside to create your shape. If you happen to want to make something like a, oh, I don't know, a banana, okay? I don't need this much clay. I might need a little extra later. I don't want to fold this over. I'm just kind of pushing down on the corners for the time being. I push over a little bit, and this clay is pretty wet, so we could probably get away with it. But as much as possible, you want to just compress it and roll it. Okay. Um, you risk if you if you only roll halfway, you risk it getting flat and then having to fold it over, and you want to be careful of that. Right now I'm getting that problem at the end of this, so I'm just going to let gravity do a lot of the work and spread it out. I want it thicker in the middle. I can kind of pinch it off at the edges. Now the trick with this is it's not going to be as easy to hollow using the pinch pot method. Um, we can get that shape of a banana. I'm wetting my hands every once in a while. I want to make the little stem at one end. I want to get those sort of flat sides. Let's just say that's going to be our banana shape. It's kind of a little one, but it'll do the trick. Um, so this is similar in the sense that we need to make it hollow. It's thicker than my thumb, so it still needs to be hollow. Down here, I mean, even your thumb, it, it, it kind of depends, but um, we're going to say anything thicker than your thumb. Particularly in the middle of winter, when it's cold, there's not a lot of um, heat to dry things quickly. Uh, you don't want to risk having any moisture in there. So what I can do is take another tool called the fettling knife. Okay, another one you want to be careful with. And I can cut right straight through.
through the center. Now the bottom of it is, isn't much thicker than my pinky, so I may not have to do too much on the bottom. I try. Um, sometimes it helps to put a little cross hatch. Let me do it on that side. So that it'll help you line it up later, and it may not be perfect later. Um, so that bottom one is kind of thin. So what I want to do is I'm going to take another tool, a loop tool, and hollow this out. There are loop tools, we have them in all different sizes, okay, and shapes. Now, this is a little thick. This is just about perfect. This one's a little bit thick. So, I've got my hollow shape. I could use a smaller loop tool, come up here, or a pointier one. We have both come up here a little bit more. But same deal, you want your walls to be about the thickness of your pinky. Then, whenever you put clay together, rather than just, we talked about it a little bit, but rather than just attaching it, you want to slip, well, you want to score, smooth, and slip it. Three S's. SC comes before SL, comes before SM. So score, slip, and smooth. Uh, first, you're going to score it. Okay, so we rough it up. Do the same thing out here. Like I said, this clay's pretty wet, so we got lucky. And then you're going to use slip. Okay. Some people are a little fussier with their slip than, than I am. Okay. All right. And then we can put this back on, and you're going to line up that little line there. Oh. Yeah, somehow I think it got. I lost my little line. Okay, there it is. So. Those would go like that. And then you want to kind of cup it. And then you're going to smooth. And when you smooth, you're not making it pretty. That's not the point of smoothing it. You're connecting the two pieces of clay. So you're not going to smooth along the line like that. You're going to, it's going to get messy, okay? Um, it, you know, it won't look as pretty. But you're taking the clay from one side and pushing it to the other side. So you're smoothing the clay from the bottom into the top, or the top into the bottom. It doesn't really matter, but they're joined, okay? They're connected. to do this without having people to ask questions to as I'm doing it. All right. So you not only can't see the crease, but you know that the connection's being made from one side to the other. And then you can work on getting your shape back the way you want it to be. Might leave it a little flat on the bottom, maybe just push in on the side so that it appears a little rounder than it might be. Maybe put your little stem up here. Now, it's not the most interesting shape, and we'll talk about that as time goes on. Um, there's things we can do to make it more interesting. And some of them are visual as opposed to legitimately true. So, for instance, I can take, let's see, let's put this here for the time being. First of all, I want to turn it over somewhere in there. I, right now I have a big giant air bubble. I want to take the time to refine it and really make it as smooth as you can. Somewhere, either maybe underneath here, like where the stem is, I can put a hole so the air can get into that whole cavity 
going straight through the center of the banana. Okay, somewhere underneath that you're not going to see. Okay, and we can put a peel. If we make a peel, a piece of this excess clay, flatten it out. top and again I'm making it extra thick down here because I'm going to need to score it to attach it but the end of the peel we don't want it to look chunky you know it's, it's got to be, be believably the thickness of a peel so the other thing I can do is make it look like it's peeled back rather than peeling that back because we know it's only as thick as your pinky pointier because that banana is pretty small at that end. I can press down here and imply that I'm looking at the fleshy part inside the banana. Okay, and scrape it back maybe a little bit, but most importantly you want to get that feeling like the skin the peel of the banana is out here but not in the center and color will help with that too when you do this project there's three things that I'm going to be grading you on uh, form believable form believable color we'll go over glazing before you have to do that and believable texture so if this was an orange the texture would be different if it was a oh I don't know an avocado or not a, yeah an avocado or a coconut or um, an artichoke, it would be a completely different texture. So think about that as you're choosing what fruit to bring in tomorrow or whenever you're here next for in person. So I'm scoring where it's extra thick here, digging some of it away. I'm going to score down here and I can always pull it away if it's too thick because that is, you know, we've got the thickness of your pinky there. And then I can just, I want to hold the sides of it so I don't squish it. I can take some of this away so it's not so chunky. So support it, and combine it. I made it a little too thick there. be believable and then you can pull it back this way okay you only want to pull it back as far as you can see like the fleshy inside part so two different methods to come up with hollow shapes that are well connected now back when we were talking about slipping and scoring a lot of people like to write off the slipping and scoring part, it just doesn't seem that necessary. And when the clay is wetter, it's not as necessary. But I want you to think about this. When clay dries, as clay is drying, it's shrinking. As the moisture comes out of the clay, it becomes more fragile, but it also becomes smaller. So imagine that you leave at night, maybe it's the handle on your mug and you decided you were just going to stick the handle to the side of the mug. Okay? And it worked great. You walked out with the wet clay with the handle stuck to the side or the top and the bottom of your banana stuck together. But during the night as that clay dries and shrinks, if they're just leaning against each other or maybe smooth a little bit, as they shrink, they're going to shrink away from each other. Okay? And you're going to come in in the morning and say, Mrs. Marr, somebody broke my handle off my mug or somebody broke my banana in half. That's not what happened. It probably just shrunk. It's very fragile. If anybody picks it up, you never pick up someone else's work for that reason. But if you took and you used a fork and you scored up the two surfaces like this and then you put some clay in there, some slip in there, and got it really like peanut butter, Okay, so now your two clay pieces are going together like that. Now when they shrink, 
they're going to shrink and tighten towards each other and get a good lock between the two. Okay? So that's the difference. Slipping and scoring, you're shrinking those pieces into each other. If you just put them up against each other, you could fool me. But in the end, you're not going to have as strong a piece, and it could shrink away from itself down the road. Okay? So that's the project. The only other thing I will tell you, because this is the first time we're actually doing something, most people finish in a day. My plan is to try and give you the demo in advance so that when you come in here and you're only here two days, you can get it to the point where it's drying out either the very same day or the next day. As the projects get bigger and more advanced, it'll take you two days, and then it might take you four days just to do the building. But say you got halfway through your banana, and you got called down to guidance, and you couldn't finish what you were going to do in a day, okay? We're going to take a piece of paper towel, get it damp, but squeeze all the excess water out of it, wrap it around. You would put wax, by the way, on your banana peel, too, just to stop it from messing up. Um, and we would put the hole in the bottom of this and initials on everything. You could take this, wrap the wet paper towel. You don't want it soaking wet because you don't want to come back and have it so soaking wet that it, it's floppy. Okay. Everybody is going to get a plastic bag with your name on it. Okay. Uh, we used to use grocery store bags, but a lot of the grocery stores around here have uh, gone to paper for environmental reasons, so they're a little trickier to come by. You're going to put this in here carefully. Get rid of all the excess air that's in there and seal it shut. And that's how you store your work so that um, it stays moist enough to continue to work with it when you come back the next day. Maybe even the next week. Kind of depends. Uh, you make sure your name's on it, because think about it, if there's a bunch of apples sitting in there with no names on it, everybody's going to pick up every bag until they find one that they think is theirs. Okay? Um, if your name is on the bag, they're going to walk right past it. That way nobody's picking it up and squeezing it and changing its shape. Okay? So names are important. Okay? So if you have any questions, you can email me. You can ask me during our next Google Meet, or you can um, wait until you're in class and we're doing the project and just ask at the beginning of the project. But hopefully that helps walk you through the whole situation, and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Have a good day.